Greetings booktubers, welcome back to Grammaticus Books. And today we've got online for you is the question, is Micronauts the best kept secret in the Marvel Universe? And the answer to that question is, yes, yes it is. And why? Well, because these magazines right here, these comic books, issues one through 12, the original run of Micronauts, the first year of it are absolutely fantastic. But why is it the best kept secret in the Marvel Universe? That's because the original issues, the original run of Micronauts ran from 1979 when it started to 1986. And in 1986, they stopped doing the issues. It had a couple of attempted reboots that didn't go that well. Um, and it pretty much died out that original hardcore well done run in 1986, almost 35 years ago or over 35 years ago, if I can do my math right. So if you aren't, if you were born in 1980 or any time after that, Chances are, you never saw these original Micronauts. You didn't know how great they were. They didn't have the longevity of, say, a Conan or a Fantastic Four or a Spider-Man or anything like that. It's not up on the bookshelves. And it sort of just faded into obscurity, which is a shame because these are, like I said, fantastic comic books. Now, the good news is, is that Marvel Comics recently reacquired the rights to Micronauts. And they are getting to later, I think it's this year, or it might be early 2024. I think actually it's, uh, I want to say April 2024, they're going to do an omnibus on Micronauts and uh, release the original, I think all uh, 1 through 59 of the original run and uh, put it into this omnibus, which would be fantastic. And I highly recommend you picking it up and getting it. So what do you say, Chromaticus? Why is this such a great comic book? I'm glad you asked that question because now I'm going to tell you what makes this one of my favorite comic book runs of all time. And when I say favorite comic book runs, I'm talking issues one through 12 of the original Micronauts, which started in 1979. I think this is January of 1979, I believe is when the first issue came out. Uh, and this is the that first issue right here. Micronauts with uh, the main character, which is Arcturus Ron. And you got the Baron cars up here who kind of stole the show on this comic book. But the reason that this comic was so great is two names. And those names are Bill Mantlo and Michael Golden. Bill Mantlo was the writer. Um, he had a great vision for this. He put that vision and was able to translate it into these comic book issues in 1 through 12. And then Michael Golden brought it to life in just stunning artwork, which I'm going to show you in here in just a minute. It was fantastic. It was revolutionary artwork for the comic books. His style was unique. Nobody really seen it before. And it just worked fantastic for the setting. And the other reason is, is that Bill Mantlo, when he was writing these, they were based off of a line of toys of Mego Corporation, the Japanese corporation, was putting these toys out. And Karza here was kind of a knockoff um, Darth Vader, uh, to be honest. You can look at them right there. But the toys were really good sellers. Um, but the comic was not a kid's comic. It was an adult comic written by Bill Mantlo. And he did a fantastic job with it. It had great characters. He created this universe around these, these toys that were being made by the Mego Corporation and created the universe in which they lived, which Mego Corporation really didn't do, and then brought them to life in these comic books issues, and particularly in issues 1 through 12. He had this story arc of how they fit into this universe and how they all interrelated, um, and he built them up with great character arcs, great characters who were um, established through these comics and developed across it. And issues 1 through 12 is a self-contained story arc and a storyline um, that is one of my favorites. Um, in, a, in a nutshell, what happens is you have uh, Arcturus Ron, Commander Arcturus Ron, departs on a thousand-year voyage in a sub-space light, a sub-light uh, spaceship, where he has to go into deep hibernation in order to complete the voyage. He returns back to homeworld, his home planet, a thousand years later, and his former tutor, Baron Karza, who was a, a renowned scientist on Homeworld, has developed the body banks where he can make people immortal, but he does it by stealing the bodies of the poor and putting the, the souls and the brains of the rich into those bodies. So the rich back him 100% for immortality, and he takes over Homeworld as the total dictator. And when Arturus Ron, Ron returns, he's arrested and uh, gets thrown into uh, jail where he makes his escape uh, along with the help of this uh, mysterious force called the Enigma Force, which you find out about later. But what it does, it sets off a 12-issue epic struggle with the Micronauts against Baron Karza that culminates, it actually culminates in issue 11, 
and then you have sort of a, a tie off with a with a, one of the, the supporting characters who's Prince Acroyer against his evil uh, Prince Trun, who is uh, Prince Shaitan. But let's take a look at this. Let's see why this is the best kept secret in the Marvel Universe. And I'm going to start right off with this artwork right here on this splash page by Michael Golden. And that is just fantastic stuff. I mean, look at this. You've got the royals who are being pursued by the acroyers who are trying to hunt them down. And right here, this is, I think, ah, I don't think this is Michael Golden's first work in Marvel, um, but this is his first uh, major you know, run on a, a comic in the Marvel Universe. If it's not, please somebody down there correct me in the comments section, but I believe this is. And just right here, you know, just from his layouts, Michael Golden is super talented and he knows what he's doing. You've got a cityscape here on one side, a cityscape on the other that forms a V that draws your eye down in here to the main characters. The Acroyers are descending down onto them um, in an impending doom to attack them. And then you've got the riders when the horse are all looking down here in this frame. So all the action starts up here, draws your eyes down to them. And then these riders' eyes and the horse's eyes draw your eyes off of the page to get you to turn it into the next page of the action. And again, I mean, look at this artwork from Michael Gordon. He's, he quickly, as soon as I saw this on the comic book stands, I knew that this was going to be a comic book that I was going to love and follow, and it absolutely is. Uh, Michael Golden just, he has a great way with drawing his characters. He knows how to do his layouts. He knows how to draw the eye across the page and lead the right, right, the block, the reader through the story. And Bill Mantlo just writes an excellent story, a very adult story um, that is not for a, based on kids' uh, a kid's toy line at all. It really um, explores these characters in a wonderful way and develops them, fantastic, develops them fantastically. Let me show you some more of the, uh, the great artwork here. So this page is right here. This shows you the return of Commander Arcturus Ron and the HMS Endeavor. It's coming back to Homeworld after a thousand year, a thousand year journey. He thinks that uh, he's coming back to a hero's welcome and instead, Baron Karza's dog soldiers meet him and uh, attack him as soon as he comes off the ship. At which point, he gets thrown into the dungeons and then meets up with uh, two of his other main characters, who are Prince Acroyer, who is the prince of the Acroyers. It's a, a race of beings that are these um, superb warriors on Homeworld. And uh, Bug, who is sort of a, uh, a common thief, rogue, rapscallion. And immediately, you get this... Uh, you get this Fafford and the Grey Mouser vibe off of uh, a Croyer, Prince of Croyer and Bug. They also meet up with uh, Princess Marie, who is um, being disguised. She goes around uh, pretending that she's a robot, a, Marie, a, a marionette, and she goes by the mar by marionette as well. Um, but she's actually one of the princesses that's in hiding after Baron Cars had killed off the royals. So up here, you've got the main character, Arcturus Ran, the love interest, Princess, Princess Mari, um, over here is the evil Baron Carzo, which is kind of a, he's kind of a, a Darth Vader knockoff, but Bill Mantlo writes him great. Bill Mantlo writes him great. He's brutal. He's got his dog soldiers, which I love the drawing on the dog soldiers. They look, they look, they're not flat cardboard knockover bowling pin, um, standard soldiers. They look competent. They look like they are uh, professional and that they would give you a fight if you ran into them. And I really enjoy that on a comic um, that takes the time to come up with a good design and, and paints the, the bad guys in a way that makes them makes them bad guys, doesn't make them just pushovers. And uh, they achieve that spectacularly in this comic book. So over here, you've got Prince Shaitan. This is uh, Prince Acroyer's evil prince who has dethroned him from the Acroyer homeworld. You've got Acroyer, the hero over here. There's Bug. And then down here are the robots. This uh, is Biotron and Microtron. Biotron helps out uh, Arcturus Ran. And uh, Microtron is a servant of Princess Mari. So those are your main characters. Uh, also you have down here is a shot is at the face of the Enigma Force. And the Enigma Force comes into play very early right here in issue one. Um, and actually rescues uh, Arcturus Ran from, uh, from the slave pits and gets him out. There it is right there. He's coming into play as they're in a combat and arena and helps transport him and his band of companions in issue one. And 
and again, look at this artwork. I mean, this is one of the reasons I fell in love with this comic book right off the stop, right off the start. And they transport them from the microverse and homeworld back to Earth. And then the next couple issues take place on planet Earth. Uh, also, one thing I'll point out in here, up here in top billing, on the, uh, on the comic book cover up here, instead of Arcturus Ron or one of the heroes, they actually put Baron Karza. So you know how important Baron Karza is to this comic book right here. He's, he's the guy who gets top billing up in the corner in the corner, uh, corner splash there on the comic book. So that's issue one. I hope that gives you a flavor of why this is such a great comic and understand why it is such a hidden gem in the Marvel Universe. I highly recommend going out and getting another copy of these if you can. It's not that difficult. But anyway, on with the first 12 issues. I'm not going to go off the 12, but I'm going to show you the covers here so you can see what's going on. So they flee Homeworld in the Microverse. They get to uh, escape from the, uh, the arena pits uh, via the help of uh, the Enigma Force, and then they wind up on Earth. And, of course, the, you got to go through the standard. Uh, they're, they're on small on, on, on uh, Earth, of course. They correspond to the size of the toys that were marketed by the Mego Corporation. Here they're about to get run over by a, by a push lawnmower. But they're still powerful. They're still superheroes. So you got the, you know, I'm going to, I have to get acclimated to being a small being on Earth and, uh, and learn about all the Earth ways. And that's this issue here. And then issue three, Death Duel on Daytona, Be on Daytona Beach, the further adventures on planet Earth. You get an interlude back onto Homeworld with Baron Karza. Just to remind you that the Baron hasn't gone anywhere and he's still as deadly as ever. Here he is destroying, killing some of the, of the uh, rebels and the poor people on uh, Homeworld. And then you get the Prometheus Pit, which is sort of the conclusion of the run of... Um, oh, that's not true. It just goes on for a couple more issues but uh, of what happens on Earth with the Micronauts. But you get the Prometheus Pit, which winds up transporting them back, if I'm not mistaken. Here is issue six, so we're halfway through one year, halfway through this arc, and they're still on Earth dealing with the Florida State Highway Patrol. You get an appearance of Man-Thing in issue seven, which is awesome. Really well done. You get Michael Golden's take on Man-Thing. And then enter Captain Universe. So Baron Karza comes, makes an entrance. He's in danger of uh, attacking the Earth, and uh, Captain Universe shows up. And at the end of this one, everybody gets sent back to Homeworld in the Microverse, which thankfully really... Um, uh, you know that it's just a, sort of a subplot, side quest uh, to the main story when they're on Earth. You know that, you know that it's eventually it's going to get back to the Microverse, to Homeworld, where they're going to have their, their final battle, the climatic battle with Baron Karza um, for control of the Microverse. And that's when you start going in here in issue number nine. We return back to that arc. Issue 10, you have it out with Baron Karza. Apparently they are losing the battle to Baron Karza. And then you have issue 11, excuse me, where the epic battle between the two of them, here's Arcturus Ron in his centaur form, Baron Karza in his centaur form, and of course the toys came with these centaur forms. You've got Arcturus Ron over the top of it, and then the Enigma Force here, which of course makes its play in the uh, final showdown. Um, fantastic series, but it did say it was a 12-issue arc. It is. It's a one-year arc, and even though the struggle with Karza comes to a conclusion this one, and I won't give away the ending. You still have sort of the epilogue, which is Prince Acroyer dealing with his traitor brother um, who betrayed the Acroyers and put them into the servitude of Baron Karza in Homeworld, uh, his brother, Prince Shaitan, and it ties that one up. And at this point, um, Michael Golden steps out of it, does his 12-issue run on here with uh, Bill Mantlo doing a story, and Bill Mantlo continues the story for a long time after this, but Michael Golden steps out, at least for a while, to my knowledge, and then with issue number 13, you actually get Howard Chaikin comes in and starts doing the artwork in, how, in uh, issue 13. Uh, Howard Chaikin of American Flag fame, that's another great series, I should probably do a little video on American Flag. Howard Chaikin does a very good job He's a good artist to take over. He's got a good style that translates well to the microverse um, and homeworld. I like Michael Golden a lot better. Um, not a knock on Howard Chaikin. He's excellent. His work on American Flag is top notch. That's a great style he develops in that one as well. Um, but you lose Michael Golden. And at that point, I kind of I kind of stepped out a bit, jumped to 19, and I've got some of the follow-up ones here. And they tried to reboot it a couple times. 
But for me, these first 12 issues right here, this is where it's at. These are the these are the best run. This is the best story arc and storyline of the Micronauts. And if you can get these 12 issues, and you can get this on eBay, it, the, the prices on issue one on eBay are all over the place, but you can pick up a good issue of this, a serviceable, readable copy of issue number one for 20 bucks or less, and a lot less on the other on the other issues. Or if you don't want to do that, Marvel Comics is going to reprint the whole omnibus of the first 59 um, episodes and get that out there. I think it's pretty sure that's releasing in April of uh, 2024. And just go get the omnibus when it comes out. Um, you'll be glad you did. Uh, the first arc alone is worth the price of admission. Uh, it's my it's one of my favorite comic book runs in all of Marvel comic book uh, history. I'll put it up there. I'll stack it up there with anything. I'll stack it up there with the best of the Fantastic Four, with Thor, uh, Conan. It's a superb story uh, married up with a unique and excellent um, artist in the form of Michael Golden. And I've got another run of Michael Golden's uh, that was done in Bucky O'Hare. I want to say that that's Image Comics. I'm going to have to check that and see where Bucky O'Hare was done. Um, but Michael Golden had a, a great style on the Bucky O'Hare comic as well. Um, but that's it. That is the Micronauts in the Microverse. I hope I gave you a flavor of just how good this comic is, especially that first 12 issues, that first one year of it, um, and why it is, in fact, Marvel's best kept secret. And when the Omnibus comes out, um, the secret may be out for everybody else, uh, and those things may get hard to get, so I would get yours while you can. Pre-order it if you can. Check them out. Order these on eBay if you want the original comics. They are excellent. Uh, and there's another thing. Um, there was a 2015, they started to make a live-action uh, movie of, uh, of the Micronauts, and obviously it, it never happened. But with uh, Marvel buying the rights to it here in 2023, getting, getting the rights back, Maybe they'll reboot that live-action comic. God knows Marvel can use a shot in the arm right now. That's for sure. So that would be just fantastic if they could pull that off. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, what else? Oh, they did, you know, there's a three paperback series issues. They wrote actually three paperback novels in 2016 of the Micronauts. I do not have those. I am going to get those. And I will get them and I will read them and review them and put them up on here. Hopefully they are every bit as good um, as these first 12 issues here from Mantlo and, uh, and Golden. Um, if they are, then that would be, uh, that would be excellent. Um, and I'll let you guys know if that's uh, worth uh, a read as well, since this is a, a, a booktube channel on literature. Um, but that's it. Hope you enjoyed this as much, uh, enjoyed listening to this as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. Uh, if you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, please do it. Um, I would appreciate that very much. Uh, and take care, be safe, and I will catch you guys in the future.